Hi, it's David Williams, and today I'm going to go through a few examples of JFET amplifier circuits. And what I'm going to do is take some typical JFET amplifier configurations and go through and derive the, the key things that we want from those, from those uh, amplifier configurations, the input impedance, the output impedance, and the, and the voltage gains. So what that's going to involve is taking circuits that look something like this one, converting them into a form looking something like this one in the small signal model, and then converting them into another form that looks something like this one. Where I have an input impedance over which the voltage will be applied, the input voltage. We'll have a voltage gain of some amount. And then finally the output impedance. So all the stuff that's in red here inside the red box is the two port amplifier configuration that we're going to end up deriving. So what we'll, do, what we'll do is taking a circuit like this we'll come up with expressions for Z in, for AV, and for Z out. Here's my first circuit. It's a common source amplifier circuit, JFET self-bias with the RS, so the resistor at the source, bypassed and bypassed by that capacitor there. And what we're going to do is fairly similar to the steps we went through with for a BJT amplifier circuit. First we want to short voltage sources, short all the voltage sources. Second thing we want to do, so all the DC, I should say, that's, that's for DC because we're only considering the AC case. We're trying to get the AC small signal model. We're assuming that we're at a high enough frequencies that those capacitors are essentially short, so we're short all, short all of the capacitors. And then three, draw the small signal model of the circuit. So that means includes replacing the JFET right here with the JFET model. Okay, so short the the source the short the voltage sources, short the capacitors, draw the AC model. So we're just going to sort of do all this at once. So we're going to have an input voltage applied. That capacitor is shorted, so voltage at the input is going to be connected straight to RG. And it's also going to be connected over here to the gate. There's my gate. My source. is is here and it's shorted straight to ground so my source is actually at ground here so I can consider that point right there that's my source so my voltage between that point and that point is my gate source voltage over here on the other side over here at the drain so we're gonna have some stuff going on in the drain external to the JFET connected to the drain, we've got the RD connected to ground because VDD is going to be shorted to ground. So there's my external RD resistor and then inside the amplifier, or sorry, inside the JFET I should say is my current source that's dependent on this gate source voltage. I'll draw it up here since I'm running out of room a little bit. It's GM, VGS. The amount of current that's being created from this current source is equal to GM times VGS. And that's connected straight over here to the source. Also internal to the JFET, some amount of internal resistance between the drain and the source we're going to call little rd, characteristic of the, of the, of the JFET itself. And hopefully RD is really big, and if RD is greater than or equal to 10 times big RD, well then we can more or less ignore this, because this is, this is big enough that it's close, close to a, an open circuit compared to how much resistance is in RD. Ignore RD or assume that it's infinite. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is figure out the voltage gain. 
and voltage gain is equal to V out over V in. And V out, of course, is the voltage that's across RD here. That's my V out. My V in is the voltage across this RG here, which is also the gate source voltage. So the voltage, well, V in, we can just say, show that, or I've just shown that V in is the same as the gate source voltage. So on the bottom, I can put the gate source voltage here, and V out, well, that's going to be equal to the current through RD times RD. And if this little RD is, if, we're, if, we're, if we can make this assumption that RD is going to be greater than or equal to 10 RD for this particular circuit, then we can ignore little RD, and so the current that's flowing here, GM, uh, VGS, is the same as the current flowing through RD. It may be a little bit flowing through our little, big RD, little RD here, but we, we're going to ignore it. So GM, VGS current is flowing through RD there. GM, VGS, uh, sometimes I'm using lowercase, sometimes I'm using uppercase for my GS, but just uh, bear with me and, and, and uh, hopefully uh, I won't keep making that mistake. So the current through it times RD, well really it's, it's a current here, some of it goes through little RD, some of it goes through big RD, so it's really big RD in parallel to little RD would be the current, and or would be the resistances that this current flows through. And sometimes we can ignore this little RD, sometimes we can, we can keep it. So what does this mean overall for the voltage gain? The voltage gain is going to be V out over Vn. We got this expression for V out over Vn. We see that the VGS is one in the numerator, one in the denominator, so they will cancel. So the voltage gain for the circuit is negative Gm times big RD in parallel to little RD. So if you know that little RD value, it's not... We might as well throw it in because it doesn't really affect us very much. Pretty, still pretty easy to calculate. Second thing I want to calculate is what is the input impedance? What's the impedance seen looking from that point in? Well, oh, I didn't designate that there. That should be RG. If you apply a voltage here, the only path that current can go through is through this big RG here. So that is your input impedance. That in is RG. And then the third thing to calculate is the output impedance. And that's going to be the impedance seen looking back into the circuit there. Oops, not there. The output impedance would be the impedance seen looking back into the circuit here from this point in. And what we see is RD in parallel to little RD in parallel to the impedance or the resistance of this of this current source and well we can when we're, we're thevenizing this and we're trying to figure out what what impedance is seen between this point and this point well we're going to open circuit the current sources so the output impedance will simply be big RD in parallel to little RD So what do we get for our two-port model? Well, the input, we're going to have RG over here for our voltage gain, we're going to have negative GM RD parallel to little RD times VN. And then we're going to have the external RD in parallel to the RD inside the transistor. The next circuit to look at is this, again it's a common source amplifier and JFET self-biasing, but this time the resistor in the source is not bypassed. And I forgot RG here. So I'm going to convert this to the AC model short the voltage sources, short the capacitors, so I've got a capacitor there at the output and a capacitor there at the input, and what I end up with is Vn applied to the gate. There's an RG resistor here, and then over here at the source, 
Well, between the source and the drain, I still have my GM VGS. It's going to be my drain here, my gate here, and my source here. Still have the GM VGS there for the current source, but connected to the source, I've got another resistor. So I'll call that RS. And then also between the drain and the source, not only do we have that current source, but we also have in series, in parallel to it, we have this internal resistor. And then external to the transistor itself, we have another resistor, RD, connected to ground. And then at RD here, so this is from the drain through RD to ground, but also connected at the drain and, and at RD here we'll have our output voltage. So output's taken across RD here. V out. And our gate source voltage is the voltage between those two points. So no longer between the gate and the ground because the source is no longer at ground because that RS resistor is not bypassed. And what I want to do, of course, is derive the from, from this circuit, from this small signal model, derive the general equations for the voltage gain the input impedance and the output impedance. This is, so this is what I'm doing. Now it's a little bit trickier than the previous example. We're going to have to use some tricks. Nothing, nothing that we haven't seen before, but just in, in different applications. So we're going to look at a, a voltage loop here, Kirchhoff's voltage loop. And v in, so a loop between V in, VGS, and the resistor in the source here. So if we're starting here at V in, then we're going to, and we drop, we go from the gate to the source, we're going to drop whatever that gate source voltage is. And then if we drop whatever the voltage across RS is, we are going to be at ground. And if we make the assumption that this RD value is much bigger than this RD value so that we can effectively ignore it. Then we know that the current going through RS here is just equal to GMVGS. Whatever current is going through this R, little RD is so small where we can ignore it. So the only current, the only effective current going through this big RS here will just be GMVGS. So we can substitute that GMVGS times RS for this VRS equation here. So we get Vn minus VGS minus GM VGS times RS. This is current times resistance is voltage and then that will bring us down to zero. So starting point, that voltage drop, that voltage drop brings us down to zero. Now, we can rearrange this, this equation, and we get Vn is simply equal to Vgs minus GmVgs times Rs. Sorry, not minus, plus. So moving these two expressions to the other, other side of the equation. And factoring out Vgs from, from these two terms here, we get VGS times 1 plus GMRS. So that's going to be important because we don't want that VGS in our expression for the for the voltage gain. So V out though, the voltage because we want to, we're trying to calculate voltage gain here. We want an expression for V out and, a, and an expression for V in. V out again. V out is simply going to be equal to the current through RD times RD. And We've already made this assumption that RD is, is really big compared to this RD, this big RD. So the only current going through this big RD is GMVGS. Right? GMVGS is going that way. Pretty much no current goes through RD, so that current must have been coming, that same current must be going through RD there. So V out then, well, V out is measured, since V out is measured with the Polarity defined as positive on this side, negative on this side, but our GMVGS is going the opposite direction. V out is going to have to be equal to negative GMVGS times RD. 
and AV is V out over V in. So we take that expression for V out and we get negative GM VGSRD and we take the expression for V in that we have here and that's VGS times 1 plus GMRS and we see we've got a VGS expression in the numerator and VGS expression in the denominator and the voltage gain is equal to negative GMRD divided by 1 plus GMRS and then what about the input impedance well the input impedance the resistance seen looking in there that's simply the RG value any voltage applied here all the current is going to go through RG so our input impedance is equal to RG and the output impedance will be the impedance seen looking back in this way the current source is going to be an open circuit when we're doing this so and we've said that this little RD value is so big we can ignore it so the only resistance that we see is this big RD so Z out equal to approximately equal to RD so there's my three values my input impedance my output impedance and my voltage gain now I'm going to do one more common source circuit and this one's a voltage divider by a circuit with the RS bypassed I'm not going to do the whole thing because there's really only one difference compared to the circuit that we did last time okay so here's my conversion to the AC model short my capacitors and short my my VDD so I've got my input coming in coming in this point through the shorted capacitor R2 goes to ground R1 also goes to ground so I've got my R1 and my R2 both well they're in parallel with each other and then connected to the gate so there's my gate there. Over here on the source side, the source resistor is bypassed, so the source of the tr of the JFET is actually connected straight to ground again. So there's my source. My gate source voltage will be, be between those two points. And then also over here on the source side, inside the transistor, I've got my GMVGS. And I've got my, between the drain and the source, I have my, inside the transistor, Inside the JFET, I've got the little RD. And then outside the transistor connected to the drain um, is where my output is, but also through, I should label that, through RD to big RD to ground. And between those two points is my output voltage. Now, my input impedance is really the only thing that's changed in this circuit. The input impedance resistance impedance seen looking in there it's R1 in parallel to R2 this time instead of just the RG value R1 parallel to R2 so there's two resistors there that are making up the input impedance the output impedance is RD in parallel to little RD and oops, I'll write that in here Z out is about RD but we can also include little RD there to make it a little bit more precise a little bit more accurate and then the voltage gain, same as same as before, output over input, and then things cancel, and what we end up is is the equation negative GM and RD parallel to little RD. So the only difference between the voltage divider bias circuit and the self bias circuit, as far as the AC goes, is that the input impedance changes a little bit. So I think I'll wrap it up there. We've looked at some, some different common source amplifier configurations and come back to the next video and we'll do some common drain amplifier configurations.